week 19 of the fantasy basketball season. With fantasy basketball deadlines approaching this week, he has a few guards I look to buy and trade for this week. The first guard, Tyrese Halliburton, and the Indiana Pacers. So Halliburton, a great season for him, no doubt about it, making the all-star team and really putting this Indiana Pacers team on his back. But his numbers have definitely dropped off over the last few weeks on the season. 20.8 points a game, 3.8 rebounds, 11.3 assists, 1.1 steals, 3 threes, and 48%. From the field for the last few weeks here for Howard Burton's been a little bit of a struggle 14.1 points a game 3.3 rebounds 9.3 assists 1.3 steals 1.7 threes and 40 percent from the field so his scoring per game's gone down drastically over the last few weeks here's Howard Burton including scoring zero points in a game and the only thing that's really keep him afloat of late is assisting in the basketball March 1st at the Pelican zero points three rebounds three assists 0% from the field. March started the Spurs, 12 points, 6 boards, 8 assists, a block, 25% from the field. The March 5th at Dallas, a monster game, 19 points, 6 rebounds, 11 assists, a block, 3 threes, 53% from the field. So it looks like Hal Burton could be getting back on track right now. But like I said, since his numbers have been down over the last few weeks, especially this scoring, this is a perfect time to buy him because this is where his value has been at the lowest point this season and he's not scoring the basketball at a high rate the assists have kept his value at a good rate because if the assists haven't been there if he was only getting six or seven assists a game he definitely would have been dropping down ranking board so right now like i said he's a buy low candidate even though you're still gonna have to play a good price but a little cheaper deal the next card Jalen brunson of the new york knicks or Jalen brunson he's been in and out of the lineup over the last couple weeks with injuries here and there but he's a tough guy and his knee, he's day-to-day -day now after they found no structural damage with Jalen Brunson on the season. 27.2 points a game, 3.7 rebounds, 6.6 .6 assists, 2.6 threes, and 47% from the field. But the last couple weeks, his field goal percentage and scoring has gone down in the games he's played. Brunson, 23.4 points a game, 2.2 rebounds, 7.6 assists, a steal, 2.2 threes, and 41% from the field. So a lot was on Brunson's shoulders with Julius Randle, OG Abinobi and Mitchell Robinson out a month now for this New York Knicks team. So Brunson, he had to take more shots. And now, like I said, missing the last two games pretty much with the knee injury where he only appeared for a minute at Cleveland and hurt the knee. And I thought it could have been the season and the knee injury, but luckily it wasn't for Brunson. So the last few games before he went out, February 24th versus Boston, 34 points, three boards, nine assists, a steal, four threes, 48% from the field. February 26th versus Detroit Pistons, 35 points, a board, 12 assists, two steals, three threes, 42% from the field. On February 29th versus the Warriors, 27 points, five boards, five assists, four threes, 44% from the field. So March 3rd, like I said, he played a minute, hurt the knee, and March 5th, he didn't play in that one. So hopefully Brunson, he returns anywhere in that March 8th ball game or March 10th. So right now, well, he's banged up a little bit, and the numbers have dropped off, even though he's had some monster stat lines, still going down four points per game from the season average. To the last two week average, this is a perfect time to buy him because the Brunson owner, he might be a little weary if Brunson could get back. There's not being 100% with a couple injuries nagging on and off over the last few weeks. And the third and final guard I look to buy and trade for is Chris Paul, the Golden State Warriors. So Chris Paul right now, his scoring hasn't been great this season, but he could bring other aspects to fantasy owners. And you can get him on a real cheap deal, assists, steals, and some three-point shooting pretty much is what he's going to bring to is on the year 8.9 points a game 3.8 rebounds 7.1 assists 1.3 steals 1.4 threes and 42 percent from the field but returning in the lineup a couple weeks ago 8.8 .8 points a game 3.8 boards six assists two and a half steals two threes 40 percent from the field so this warrior team besides that bad blowout game since Paul's return to the lineup they're playing good basketball and when you got a guy like Chris Paul with the veteran leadership and he could run an offense with his eyes closed, that's what you're going to get. So if you want some assists and steals and three-point shooting, you don't have to give much, in my opinion, to get Paul on your roster. February 29th at the Knicks, 11 points, four boards, six assists, three steals, two threes, 37% from the field. March 1st at the Raptors, 13 points, four boards, five assists. Two steals, three threes, 50% from the field. And March 3rd at Boston, two points, three boards, seven assists, a steal, 16% from the field. So CP3, as long as he stays healthy, he still could contribute to fantasy owners and be a guy that helps in other categories besides scoring. Where he's not going to score 20, 25 points a game like he did in his heyday. So that's a few guards I look to buy and trade for with the deadline approaching this week for week 19 of the fantasy basketball season.